Andrew Tate has gotten clapped on YouTube. He's gotten clapped on TikTok. TikTok has advised that they're also looking to remove the duplicate videos of Tate. The move follows in the footsteps of Instagram, Facebook, also banning him from their platform. Uh, and Andrew Tate is off. He's off TikTok as of uh, as of now. Here it is. Permanently banned from TikTok for breaking content uh, rules. Controversial content creator and former kickboxer Andrew Tate has been permanently banned off TikTok. In a statement to the Washington Post, TikTok said Andrew Tate's account was removed for breaking rules on content that attacks, threatens, incites violence against or otherwise dehumanizes an individual or group. I think a lot of people forget that women are also a part of that. Now, knowing what I know about the way that, uh, you know, internet content works, knowing what I know about how like reactionary forces operate, I'll just say this. The next wave in this is to one, get involved in the debate sphere and talk about free speech. Two, turn around and weaponize uh, the, the same platforms like uh, arbitrary guidelines against people that violated on the other uh, other side. They're going to do the what about violence against men narrative. Why do I know this? Because I lived through 2016 and 2015 as an online content creator who was at the Young Turks who was on the side that you are all on now. I've been on the side for a very long time. I've seen this dance. I've seen this song and dance play out many times over. And that is where we're going to go. It's a comfortable team to, to play in. And that's precisely why uh, they're going to do that. This was my greatest call, like I said on my alt account. My greatest lock of the decade was calling a return to 2015 era politics once Biden got into office and things returned to normal. Reliving Gamergate era politics, we're in the misogyny stage. Next stage is the alt light video game essays defending free speech. And the final stage is Nazis clawing back Back into public consciousness through the right wing aligned social media algos on TikTok. And uh, that is precisely what's going to happen. They're going to do that. They've done it before. And they're, they will try to do it once again. They'll turn around and they'll look at all the fem cells on TikTok and be like, look at all these misinterest uh, fem cells who are saying like, kill all men, fuck all men, blah, 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 blah. And ultimately, there is a distinction between the two. Misinjury does not accompany structural violence in the same way that misogyny does. But obviously, it doesn't fucking matter. A, a quick way to describe it is this, okay? Bigotry, discrimination, and hateful speech or hateful misconduct is simply being mean if it doesn't accompany the historical reference points and contemporary examples of structural violence. The reason why misogyny is bad is is not necessarily because like, oh, you're, you know, shitting on women. The reason why misogyny is bad is because society has structurally aligned to oppress women, at least historically, and contemporary remnants of that uh, historical association, that historical oppression still exists in society to this day. The same energy goes for, uh, you know, homophobia and bigotry of other sorts. And every single time you turn around and like shit on fucking fem cells, which I do regularly, right? Fem cells, rad fems, they're really fucking cringe. They're really fucking annoying, Right. They, they go crazy. They're constantly, they pop off. Look at any of my tweets where I uh, encounter a group of stands and you will see like, uh, you know, I, I had the audacity to reply to Megan D. Stallion and immediately there's like 10,000 QRTs of people being like, you're a misogynist. You should kill yourself immediately. Please kill yourself. You're a fucking misogynist, blah, blah, blah. Those people are incredibly annoying. Having said that, however... Yeah, or you're 40, which is the worst one. It's worse than saying kill yourself. Those people are just like fucking toxic. Those people are cringe. Those people are annoying. But ultimately, they're not relevant in the grand scheme of things. They have no power. And more importantly than their own personal uh, lack of power, there is nothing. There's no representation of that in our structures. Misogyny versus misinjury is like telling your boss you're fired versus your boss telling you you're fired. Both are not nice, but one obviously has power and the other doesn't. Exactly. Or... Misogyny versus misandry is like homophobia versus heterophobia. It's that's it. It's like straight pride. Why no straight pride parade? That's what the energy is. Same with like anti-white racism versus anti-black racism. So you can try to reduce it and strip it of all of its context and all of its nuance as much as you want. But ultimately, that is the reality, which is why, regardless of my uh, me being banned for my usage of the C word and push coming out and basically saying that I'm not white enough <laughs> to be able to say it, most people that saw that clowned on it and laughed about it, including like actually racist people. Like even Republicans understand, even conservatives understand that like the C word is not the same as the N word, right? Hate against anyone is bad. One isn't as bad as the other, but trivializing hate against men is still kind of fucked. Dude, I'm a man, my brother in Christ. I get the anti uh, men hatred as well. It is a laughable notion to sit here and act like it's the fucking same. That's crazy. I and I've said this before, right? The reason why the N-word is such a powerful word is because it's something different than just uh, a hurtful word. It is a reinforcement of the pre-existing and still existing systematic oppression that black people face. You get it? That's the main difference. 
because without chattel slavery, without the history of brutal colonial occupation, without the history of current and uh, subjugation of black communities and black people in general that have been systematically underfunded, systematically cast aside, that have been ruined by the criminal justice system and a lack of adequate funding, the N-word would just be a mean word. It would be the exact same thing as the word cracker. The delicious saltine treat is what I'm saying. And I think most people do understand that, but they try to make an argument. They try to desperately craft a narrative and seek oppression and seek victimhood where no such oppression or victimhood actually exists in an effort to just like feel kind of better about yourself, I guess, or feel kind of cool, like you want to get in on it. Misogyny is a hateful ideology that is not tolerated on TikTok is a laughable statement, by the way. We've been removing violated videos and accounts for weeks, and we welcome the news that other platforms are also taking action against this individual. The Andrew Tate hashtag is still visible on TikTok at the time of writing, but presumably it will be shadow banned, similar to how other controversial or dangerous hashtags have been wiped. The problem is, it's laughable. Like, everyone that has ever been on TikTok, even for longer than a fucking second and a half, knows that that is a laughable concept. Like, the idea that misogyny and hateful misconduct is not allowed on the platform is, is ridiculous. Um, before this happened, of course, uh, he, go he was banned off of Facebook as well. And, and that kind of, like, started the sequence of bans. I, I believe he's now banned off of YouTube as well. He has also ended his... Uh, he also has ended his... Uh, uh, Hustlers University, multi-level marketing scheme. Now, am I going to take credit for all of this? Am I going to take credit for like successfully fucking clapping Andrew Tate's ass cheeks in front of hundreds of thousands of people and then millions of other people on uh, multiple platforms that ended up uh, causing the demise or at the very least like started the demise being caused? Yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to, you know, I like I'll just I'll just say it, you know, Seems if you want to see like what started this sequence of L's that my man started taking on July 21st, you can clearly see uh, in this video, I made Andrew Tate run away in a debate, which is now sitting at 1.6 million views. That definitely did play uh, a role. I know a lot of you are still conflicted saying, well, that was platforming. It's not platforming. He already had the platform. He already had a much larger platform outside of Twitch, but he also certainly was not on my platform. He was on Twitch on someone else's Twitch account and I uh, was asked to join. So Andrew Tate, you know, shouts out, uh, pour one out, pour one out for the boy. Son, can you please at least mention that you are humble and privileged because you are kind of boasting now and that's not allowed on Twitch. I mean, part of the reason why I was able to successfully take him down was exclusively because I am so privileged. I, I recognize those privileges. I use it to my advantage. I use it to your advantage as well, as best as I can try. I look a certain way. I sound a certain way. It's hard to make uh, the you're actually a soy boy cuck narrative stick when I'm six foot four, hairy as fuck, and, you know, a, a big dude overall. I myself do not personally abide by such rigid gender norms. Uh, I, you know, I, I think that those are silly, right? <laughs> Someone said, you look gay, though. Yeah, that's not what your mom said, though, last night. Sorry to report this, but uh, I'm your stepfather now. But yeah, that juxtaposition, that juxtaposition is what... Uh, made me more successful than other people that also went after him, I think, in my opinion. Also, if you're a tater tot and you say, I look gay, that's kind of funny. My man is the most European dress motherfucker on the planet. He is so queer coded. The only thing that allows him to beat the otter allegations is his bald head, but not really. I mean, he just dresses in the most European slash queer coded way possible. Are you kidding me? My man literally wears little slippies like he wears skin tight fucking velour pants and shit. What the fuck do you mean? Uh, dude, you're gay. So yeah, including sparkling water, including like riding so hard for sparkling water or uh, talking about how you are much better at like uh, sexting men than the sex workers under your employ. You know, if you're going to talk about, like, being sus or whatever, like, Andrew Tate quite literally was like, I can sext dudes way better than women can. Like, what do you mean? He straight up admits it. Like, he loved making dudes come. That was his passion. Until, you know, he farmed a bunch of 12-year-olds out of their mother's credit card money for his Hustlers University multi-level marketing scheme. Uh, I guess my, my final words on it is uh, Big L... Major L for Andrew, major L for the platforms in general, but most importantly, a major L for 
12 year old boys all around the United States of America will now be rudderless. They will be looking for the other next misogynistic Hydra head that will pop up. Olivia Little of Media Matters says, new Andrew Tate videos are widely circulating on TikTok because of fan accounts despite the platform's promised ban. And it looks like TikTok is doing little to stop the spread of his content. Just searching Andrew Tate brings up a massive list of fan accounts, many of which are quickly archiving their old videos in an attempt to ban evade. There it is. TikTok has consistently fumbled moderating fan accounts that upload duplicated content of banned influencers. This is exactly how InfoWars and Alex Jones content continues to go viral on the platform. It's not the influencers uploading it, but fans. Yeah. Us women haters are oppressed. All of our public speakers get silenced. Yeah. Not really. Misogyny isn't one of those things that like, uh, uh, you know, people often go after you for unless you're literally like Rouge V, you know what I mean? Who was another PUA guy before Andrew Tate. Most of these platforms allow misogyny to continue. Of course they do. It's very hard to moderate content like this. Are you making jokes or are you being serious? I make jokes like that all the fucking time sarcastically. Does that mean that like, you know, I'm going to get banned? It's very difficult to moderate this sort of shit. It's very, very, very difficult to moderate this sort of stuff. Anyone with a fucking brain cell understands that reality. However, Andrew Tate didn't do the Jordan Peterson thing of like constantly trying to carve out uh, an exit strategy for himself. He never hid his perspective. He openly was propagandizing violence against women on very clear terms. And if you do that so consistently, yeah, you are going to get clapped for fucking misogyny. It's like it's like revealing your power level, you know? Nazis all over the internet know that you're never supposed to reveal your power level because once someone knows you're a fucking Nazi, it's a wrap. They're not going to take you seriously. Platforms are going to start banning you. You're going to get banned from the Hassan Abu broadcast and not be able to subscribe at the top of the hour where a 60-second ad break comes, and you're going to be stuck there watching the ad instead of not watching the ad and enjoying an uninterrupted broadcast experience. I recognize the, the lack of power that we kind of have towards structural issues. I recognize the, the lack of power that we have towards like actually fighting against structural oppression like misogyny, right? By taking down like one fucking misogynistic content creator, you know what I mean? That's like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Like that's not going to fucking solve the issue. You know what I mean? It's true. It's just fucking true. But I'm not going to ride to like keep a, a guy like Andrew Tate unbanned from these platforms when he very clearly is like championing it. Like he, he, nobody asked him to be the fucking CEO of misogyny. And he was like, no, I'm going to be the CEO of misogyny. I'm going to do it. I hate women. Except no, I don't. Now that I got banned, I don't hate women. I'm sorry. I love women. Like he could have just been like lightly misogynistic and continued doing what he was fucking doing. But no, he had to like literally, the reason why he was so powerful and so successful in such a short period of time was because he was appealing to the dumbest person. And in order to appeal to the dumbest person, you got to just fucking let it ride. You got to just say it like you mean it, right? The Trump uh, thing. Trump isn't any different than any other fucking Republican with respect to his worldview, with the things that he advocates for, but he says it. He says it in a way that dumb guys understand. And when you do that, you will be very successful. When you do that, you'll be very, very successful, especially if you are firmly planting yourself behind structural uh, inequalities and structural oppression, like misogyny, like racism, you know what I mean? If you do that, there is already pre-existing social conditioning. So people are constantly looking for someone to reconfirm their biases. This is much larger than Tate. The reason why they scalped one was because like, he wrote it. He said he was uh, the, the CEO of misogyny. So what were you expecting? Is there a way to do that, but to re-educate them to the light side of the force? Hmm, I wonder. I wonder if there is. I wonder if there is a, a way to, uh, I don't know, dumb down content and commentary uh, and make it as broadly appealing as possible from like a leftist perspective. Oh, well, I guess we'll never know if there is someone doing that uh, with like a pretty sizable community as well. Probably not, though. You know what I mean? Uh, Andrew Tate being banned. Steven Crowder's talking about it. Who's Andrew Tate? What's more important is why Andrew Tate was suspended from numerous social media platforms. Hint, too many guys enjoyed his content. We also say goodbye to a legend as Brian Stelter has finally been fired from CNN. Tune in right now. Andrew Tate's house raided in Romania over charges of human trafficking after it allegedly kidnapped an American woman. <laughs> yeah, too many guys enjoyed his content. Like, even if he didn't do this, even if this wasn't real, motherfucker, his content literally was like, choke women, women of property. Of course, the right is going to try to farm the Andrew Tate cloud as, mu as much as they can. But, well, they didn't get to it fast enough. You know what I mean? 
they were not able to get to Andrew Tate fast enough. And unfortunately, before they could get to Andrew Tate and like, you know, suckle his titties for all that good, delicious SEO juice that they could have gotten, uh, he got clapped and only Aiden Ross was able to do the clout farming. So guess what? Hold this fucking L, Steven Crowder. Hold this fucking L, Ben Shabibo. I love the idea that like, uh, you know, TikTok, Facebook, all these guys are like, oh man, oops, I guess we kind of fucked up with this Andrew Tate character. Time to ban him. When in fact, like, Andrew Tates have existed throughout time. They're not going anywhere, okay? There's going to be more that come out, but like this is going to continue happening because it is a viable way to make money. They're, they're never going to actually tackle the problem, which is the algorithms pumping out this kind of fucking shit. These are structural issues regardless, and you can't just like uh, take it out by like cutting the head of the Hydra. There's always another head that's going to pop up. So... We have to get rid of women once. Yeah, the only way to defeat the Andrew Tate and misogyny is by getting rid of all women. That's right. I'm the new Andrew Tate. I'm the new Top G. I took, his, I took him down. I took him down multiple pegs. And now I'm the new Top G. But yeah, someone else is going to fucking take that. Someone else is going to take their role. Someone else is going to take their position and, you know, do the exact same shit that they're doing. And there's always going to be a, a place for that. The issue is the algorithms literally fucking pump you into the stratosphere. So... You know, back in like 2016, 2017, it was like, uh, you know, alt-right shit. There were so many kids that were turning fucking Nazi. Now with TikTok, it's even worse than that. Banning Andrew Tate really doesn't do anything. The Hydra analogy is spot on. It's the algorithm that needs fixing so it doesn't boost these guys. Yeah, but they're never going to do that because guess what, dude? They're not going to do that because that's how they make money. They fucking milked Andrew Tate like Andrew Tate milked misogyny. It's like a double bind. Andrew Tate milked misogyny to fucking blow his own personal brand up, right? And then TikTok and all these other platforms are also milking him because that's more eyeballs. That's more content. That kind of fucking right-wing reactionary content is like super easy to, to make. And it's super easy to have people pay attention to it. So when you do that, you're, you're not going to ban a guy like that. Or you're not going to ban a guy like that until it's fucking too late. Because like you're already taking advantage of him. Like TikTok and Facebook and all these other platforms used Andrew Tate. Like Andrew Tate used his fucking girlfriends to do his webcam business.